Hi, my name is Colin, and this is a video setup guide for Xvision's version 2 range of NVRs. Okay, so the first screen you see is where you create your admin password and, whether you, and decide whether you're going to use the unlock pattern mode or not. So let's do that then. So admin password, it has to be a minimum of eight characters. So I'm going to do admin one, two, three. Show it there. And then duplicate it here. Okay, that's all good. Now the next one, unlock pattern enable, is an option. You don't have to use it. If you do want to use it, click on the draw, the pencil icon. Draw a pattern. I'm going to go from top left, top left, around, and in. I'll just confirm that again, and then I can enable that. So once I apply that, we now come to the login screen, where I can enter the password, or I can do the unlock code. So the password, I'll just manually enter it there, or pattern. I can enter it here and we're in and there's the startup wizard you get when you first turn the machine on so let's run that so this is the network screen if you tick DHCP the IP address subnet mask and gateway will be filled in for you automatically as soon as you plug the cable into the network to your router it will assign IP address subnet mask and gateway so I'll click next oh sorry before we do that Click on UPnP, that enables any port forwarding required for the machine, so it just does it for you. And click next. Here's the time and date. We'll set it to UK standard, date, month, year, 24 hours. GMT is um, zero. We can set daylight saving time if you want. We can set the, what, what time, when it, when it occurs, what month, what date, what time what happens or you can go to NTP enable a uh, national time server click update and it will update the time next we have NTP for national time protocol so you can turn on time servers there and have the um, online clocks set your DVR clock for you so it's always accurate um, unfortunately because we're in the UK and it's saying 1047 we've got to turn on daylight saving time and enable that and that should make it to correct time, 11.47. Now, as you can see, we've got one camera here that's showing live already without doing any search. It's already there. Uh, that's because the camera is plugged straight into the back of the recorder and that will occur. Plug any camera to the back of the recorder, any of our cameras, and it will appear on the screen. If you want to add other network cameras that aren't plugged directly into the recorder, if they're into the network or they're Wi-Fi or anything like that, um, you need to go on to an empty channel click on the pencil and change switch mode to manual mode and OK it and then if you click search it should then find any network connected cameras here as you see so we'll select one let's select 163 click it across there there's the details of the camera you can give it a name call it whatever you like put the password for the camera in if required and then add and you'll see you've got the green state light there showing the camera live so if you want to add another camera again click on the pencil switch it to manual mode and OK it and then click the arrow and add there we go that's that Next, we go on to the disk drive. This is showing you just information about the hard drive. We've got a 931 gig, a one terabyte drive, um, 898 available. How many hours of recording it will do at present settings. And the select button. Now the select one, you click on that if you want to format the drive. Or what most people do is just leave it in auto and it'll automatically overwrite. If you want it to last for seven days, you can say seven days, select and format it and it will then record and overwrite every seven days but your best thing is stick it on auto and you get the most out of the machine 
Okay, next is the monitor resolution. So obviously I can see somewhat on the screen that we're recording now. So that's okay. If we want to change to another setting, we can select our setting here and go up to a 4K monitor. Next we have the uh, P2P ID code for this machine, along with a QR code to add it to the software, the IP address, subnet mask, web port and client port. Finally a summary of the settings, how it's all set up, and then do not show this window next time. If you tick that and then click finish, the wizard won't appear again. Okay, let's have a look at record modes and motion detection next. So we go into the main menu and go to record. Now this is how the scheduler is set up from the factory. So it's set up to record constantly in normal mode, all days of the week, all hours of the day. So 24 seven, it's recording constantly. Now, if I wanted to set it to record motion only, I'd need to get rid of the green blocks and replace with yellow motion blocks. So the first thing to do is get rid of the green. You can do that by clicking individually like that. Or if you want, you can do it all in one go by clicking and dragging a box over the ones you want to get rid of. Let go of the mouse and they're gone. Likewise, adding blocks in the same, same way. Click and drag box, let go. So now we've got motion uh, activity, motion triggers only 24-7 on channel one. Now channel two is still set to, to uh, constant normal record. So rather than doing all that for all four cameras, if you've got more, even more monotonous, you can take this one, copy it. So we're copying channel one all days of the week to the remaining two, three and four channels. Click copy and apply. So now all the cameras are set to motion record. So next we need to set up the motion record um, screen. So we go to alarm and then motion. Here is the setting screen. We've got uh, how long it beeps for, if at all, the recorder box. If you have an alarm interface set up, how long, whether that works or not. How long it bleeps for, record channel. So if it's recording on channel camera, camera number one, record on channel number one, that's correct how long it records for after motion has gone away, uh, whether it shows a message on the screen, whether it sends you an email, or whether it shows this, the, uh, the camera in question full screen like that. Okay, so once we've done that, got that set up, that's, uh, that's all good. We'll click on the motion button down the bottom, and that brings up the motion setting screens. So we can see it's uh, channel one, it's switched on and sensitivity at four. That's about middle, so that's okay. So now we need to set up the motion uh, area. So click on the setup cog, and you'll see we've got a clean screen here. That means it's gonna ignore all this motion here. And if you want, want it to look at motion, let's set up this bottom section as motion. You, again, you click and drag a box or individually add the blocks that you want. Okay, so now that's set up, that will look for motion in these red areas only and ignore the parts that are clear. So if I right click to come out of that and apply, and if we just have a look at the, uh, the live view, you'll see it's a fairly clean image. There's no, uh, no record lights in the top right hand corner here. So if I activate the motion now by coming into that area, you'll see bottom right, top right side, you've got a running man and a record indicator. So now if I keep that area clear for at least 30 seconds, that will then go off and it'll stop recording. Okay, that's it, the, the, the motion detection light's gone off and it stopped recording. Act, activate it again and it will start recording. There we go. So going back to the record modes, your options are normal, motion, and I.O. If you've got an alarm system set up, this is where you would enable your alarm interface um, timings, your scheduler. If you wanted to record constantly and be informed when there was someone moving around in your area, your property, you could have this set up. 
green and yellow so when you come to playback on the play line you'll see in the playback video along the bottom you'll see green for constant and yellow flex for motion so we'll just quickly go to the playback screen if I zoom in on this uh, last 30 minutes sorry that's two hours there we go so you can see I've been changing the settings in the recorder we've got green for constant record yellow for motion only record and green and yellow as you see here for constant record with motion activity now how to play back right click with the mouse and click on this button here you got the playback button just to the right of it you've got a little up arrow and that will give you a quick playback of five seconds ten seconds thirty seconds a minute or five minutes on all cameras so it'll just go back 30 seconds or five minutes and play back but if you just click on the playback button it takes you to the play screen and you'll see we've got a um, timeline along the bottom here from midnight to midnight we've got a date calendar on the left hand side the type of recording we're looking for the channel number and some transport controls now the timeline is the important one, that's uh, looking at the recordings, you can see we've got a few different flecks here um, where I've been messing around in different settings. Um, this is a 24 hour display, I can bring that down to 2 hours so you can drill down to the, the actual recording things. The green obviously are constant, yellow are motion, and green and yellow are constant and motion. So to play back you can just click at any point and it's playing back. You can obviously pause it, go backwards, go forwards, bring it full screen, stop, fast forward, and we can back up here. I'll show you that in a second. So yeah, just click along the one you want, instantly find the uh, the incident. And if you ha if you have um, something happen, let's just go to here, camera three. So let's say we want to back up camera three from here. You click on the scissor icon here. Then you can then drag from start to finish the uh, recording you want and let go. Click on the backup button there. And then you've got the options of RF, AVI or MP4. RF requires the player that's on the disc to be used. AVI and MP4 can be used with any media player software. So I'll pick MP4, it tells me I've got channel 2 and 3 selected, 172 megabytes, starts at 1151, ends at 1154 and save. It then looks for a USB stick you've got plugged into the unit and you click OK and off it goes. Once it's finished click cancel and remove the USB stick and you've got it there as backup. While playing back, you can bring up any camera full screen by double clicking on it. Double click again to bring it back to multi-screen. You can also zoom in on the picture simply by scrolling the mouse wheel. Now, how to add users to the system. If you wanted to give your family member or uh, a member of staff the, the access to the system to let them see the, the footage, um, see live cameras, that sort of thing, you can do that. And you can give them all access or limited access. So let me show you how to do that. So we right click and go to the setup screen. And then in the system section, we have multi-user. Select that. And you'll see we've got seven users set up, admin and six other users. Admin is yourself. Here you can um, click on this notepad and make any amendments to your settings. I'm going to disable my password to save, save me logging in and out when I'm demonstrating this stuff on video to you. But you would normally leave that enabled. Change your password here. There we go. So that's now disabled my password. Now to give it another user access, let's say this person here, user one. Let's just click on there. So we'll enable that user and we'll enable their password and you give them whatever password you like. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then let's make sure that's right. Yeah, and save. Now permissions is where you decide what they can and can't do or what they can and can't see. So you can give them any access you want. Let's turn 
these off. Okay, so that's the default. If you want to give them access to live cameras, you can do that. You can give them access to whatever cameras you do and don't want them to have. You can let them play back, again, what cameras you do and don't want them to have. PTZ, if you've got cameras that are motorized, you can give them access to one or all of them here. And then here are your system settings that you can give them access to or deny them access to. Once you're done, click save and that's it, done. If for any reason you need to reset the DVR back to its factory settings, just right click, go to the main menu, set up, and then go into maintenance under the system setting, load default, and here you can select what section of the system or all the system to reset and then click apply. It asks you for your password and authenticate. Thank you.